Okay, so the Go Fast Camper has got to be the best, worst product I've ever owned. Let me explain what I mean. Dad, you're gonna go broke if you keep making those videos. If you haven't seen one of these before, this is where I review a product I paid full price for, have no sponsorship or bias towards, and have tested hard. Like, probably to the breaking point. I bought this tent December 9th, 2021, and have basically beat the living billets out of it for over a year. They gave me a lead time of February 10th to March 15th, and they hit the early part of that window. Um, so these guys have their production dialed. If they give you a estimate of when it's gonna be ready, I'm pretty sure you can count on it. I drove up to Montana and had them install it in their actual warehouse up there. I think it probably took only like 20 minutes. It was really fast. My only complaint was this strip of weather stripping right here was actually installed wrong and it pops out up here. I didn't notice it when I was at the installation place and it doesn't seem to have affected anything really. They advertise this tent as being engineered for racing in Baja, which is of course ridiculous because nobody races with a tent, except they did. But that was with their super light tent model on a normal bed rack. So it doesn't really apply to this tent at all. GoFast Marketing is full of self-proclamations. They claim to make the world's strongest tent. They also claim it is the world's best truck bed camper, which would obviously be a matter of preference or your actual use case. For example, my grandma would definitely not think it's the best camper. She wouldn't even be able to get into it. But all of that aside, here's the thing. I can't seem to break this tent and I break everything. And I think I know why. Okay, let's talk about the tent for a few minutes and then we'll jump into covering the frame. You're going to notice that there really just isn't a whole lot to the tent. It is about as strong as it is featureless and it is as light as it is empty. And that is why I say it is the best worst tent. See, in the world where overlanding has become overloading on everything, Go Fast handed us a perfectly adequate product but it's very plain. In a world where everything else is throwaway, they gave us a tent that is very easy to repair and very easy to service. This approach obviously has its advantages, but it also has its disadvantages. If you buy a GoFast camper, you will come up with your own list of what I like to call, why didn't they just? It's a, it's a frustrating list usually. Why didn't they give us an easy way to run electronics? Or why is there a waterfall going down on my feet each night? Oh wait, you didn't know about that one? Oh yeah, so we'll talk condensation in just a second, but I'm gonna give you a quick tour of the tent so you kind of understand the landscape and what I'm talking about. So first of all, it has these removable floor panels. Some of them are small squares like this. So you can remove one hatch, and that's the hole that I'm standing through. So I can go through the floor and out the bottom. Then you of course have same similar size hatch on the other side. So when I'm camping by myself, I actually just leave this one out always, and I just sleep on the side right here, and then I can kind of come and go. I don't actually use the ladder. Now a lot of people love the ladder, and I get it. It's a lot easier to use a ladder than hopping in and out of here in the back of your truck. That's not hard, but depends on your age, capability. I'm sure by the time I'm 60, probably not gonna be doing that very gracefully. But anyhow, the ladder connects to the sides or to the back. Um, I think if you were gonna buy this tent, remember these side windows are optional. I recommend getting them for the views and everything, for the added side-to-side -side ventilation. But if you don't get these windows, then your only option for a ladder is off the back, which also kind of interferes with where your tailgate drops down. So pretty much I think the side windows, if you're gonna run a ladder, I think the side windows are probably a must. These pads pile out. When, it, when I'm talking about this whole tent, you can take this out and turn this whole back of your truck into a room that you can hang out in a snowstorm, or you can hang out in the rain and play cards back here or cook back here, whatever you want. It's super easy. All these panels just stack up. So you just pop the panel out, throw it in the corner, 
Throw your bedding down for a second. Pop another one out. Throw it on top. Boom! There you go. All stored away. I've seen some where they go, oh, we've got these great folding panels that fold and then they fold up. Well, the problem is they're all completely the full width. So if you don't have a ladder and you want to get out through here, you literally pretty much have to fold the whole thing away. So this little pocket panel thing that they have, as unsophisticated as it is, it actually works great. And I think it's probably the way these things should actually be done. Keep in mind the other thing with the ladder, the ladders are heavy. They're made out of aluminum, but they're still heavy. You still have to store them someplace. They don't fit up in here. Ditch the ladder, learn how to climb in and out. Works great. You will notice there is enough room, and you'll notice when I open this up, I did have my sleeping bag in here. This is a summer weight sleeping bag. Easily fits in here with some like backpacking pillows. Remember, backpacking pillows aren't the most comfortable pillows. So if you want full size, huge, thick pillows, you're one of those people, they're not gonna fit that great in here. They kind of can be squished, just depends on how thick. So my normal pillows fit in here just fine with my summer weight sleeping bag. My winter weight sleeping bags that are actually mummy bags will compress down and fit in here. But if you're gonna camp in one of those like cloth, super fluffy, like we've got a two person Teton bag that's awesome for the winter. Um, it doesn't fit in here at all. The rest of it, you're gonna notice, this is a very plain tent. Everybody else is trying to put tons of like bags that hang off the side for shoes and a million drawers for your iPad to watch a movie at night and for your phone. There is nothing like that in here. There is no pouches, there is no nothing. There's the two optional doors on the side that do have mosquito netting, obviously. There's your ventral ones, pull down and allow it to vent. Condensation, like I said, we'll talk condensation in just a second. And that's it, there's nothing else. The fabric seems super durable, it seems to have held up really great. I've had no problems with ripping. The zippers are super tough. This is aluminum honeycomb panel. Super light, super durable, right? All those pros, right? Now here's the negative. When you camp in the winter, the coldest part of your tent becomes this roof because there's no insulation on it. Well, guess what happens to condensation? When you're sitting in this tent, even when you open these little vents, when it's freezing cold outside and let the cold air in, it doesn't vent out fast enough. So this roof becomes so cold that all the moisture from your breath, especially if there's a couple of you sleeping in here, collects on the roof and it runs down the roof because it's perfectly angled straight onto your sleeping bag and onto your feet. And it's significant enough that your sleeping bag will actually get pretty wet down there. Now, you can solve that a couple ways. You can go get carpet panels that are very cheap, stick carpet panels on your roof, you're gonna add a little bit of insulation, and it won't, the condensation, instead of clinging to the easiest thing to go to immediately, more of it finds its way out of your tent. We tend to always travel where we have at least like one towel with us, and I literally just take a towel out at night flip it down over the top of our feet and leave it down there. The condensation drains down, builds up on the towel. I dry the towel out during the day and that's what I do. If GoFast deserves credit for anything, I would give them credit for learning from their mistakes. I, everything I say sounds so negative, but listen to what I mean. The first version of the GoFast camper was essentially tubular and it was welded and those broke really easy. I actually had quite a few friends that had those and they were not actually that sturdy. Uh, so GoFast learned from their first design, completely re-engineered this and totally changed their manufacturing and I think they really got a lot of things right second time around. You're gonna see that most all of this is tubes that are held together by billeted ends where everything is screwed together and reinforced from multiple angles. There is no wells. They also reinforced it with all of these angles, so triangulated supports. You have two here, you have two in the front, you even have two in the back back here. People love to complain about everything, but then they forget to understand why some things are the way that they are. So for example, a lot of people will complain that these are in the way. You know, when you open it up to Capana mode, you wanna be able to put stuff in and out and pull large things out of the back of your truck. And yes, these absolutely do get in the way, but also they make this thing incredibly rigid and incredibly sturdy. When you're off-roading and flying down a lot of whoops and bumps, I see a lot of people's racks 
uh, like they're, they're swaying, like rocking like this and their tents are flying around. That gives you the possibility of, of denting things up here. I've done that before with a tent. I was actually in Sand Hollow one time with a guy that had a wrap from a very well-known manufacturer actually and a really heavy tent, an exceptionally heavy tent on top. And by the end of one day of off-roading, that rack was quite literally just falling apart. So these types of supports are actually necessary. I actually love it. They even mark them uh, just like you would all your suspension bolts so you can see if anything's twisting out. Now, here's a crazy thing. This was installed almost a year and a half ago. I have not had to tighten a single bolt on this thing, not one bolt. It's been through Baja, it's been through thousands and thousands of miles of washboard, and I've had nothing come loose. So to me, that's actually pretty impressive. Um, the way that they secure it to the bed of the truck, again, I have not had to tighten a single bolt on this. It has never come loose. It's a pretty impressive clasp that they have. The beautiful thing is they're actually really easy to remove. So if you wanna take this off of your truck, you're really only dealing with four bolts. There's options. Uh, if you guys, earlier in the video, if you pause the sheet that shows the order form for my order, uh, you'll see that the rear window and then having a window in here is optional. One nice thing about Go Fast is you do have those options and you can customize. Some of the things that I'm actually surprised have held up is things like, like these clips when you lock your truck. They don't actually feel particularly durable, but I haven't managed to break any yet. And the beautiful thing is if you do break these, you can order a replacement from them. I think they're like 20 bucks. They don't seem to rip you off on parts, like replacement parts. I like that because if I'm ordering a replacement part, it's because something you gave me broke. And I hate it when people are telling me that this class costs a hundred bucks, you know what I mean? So I've been impressed with the pricing that they have on replacement parts. I have not had to replace anything yet. Everything on this tent is replaceable from the fabric to these, to the doors, to every individual piece of aluminum that holds this thing together. So the nice thing is this thing isn't gonna end up in landfills. I've tested so many rooftop tents. There's at least four tents that I've tested so far that are already destroyed. Uh, like I had one from Roof Nest that they had a hard shell on the top of it. That hard shell wore out within two years, pretty much ruined by the sun. And of course they had discontinued the tent at that point, so you couldn't get a new shell. And the tent is basically just trash at this point. It's not a disposable product. And we kind of live in a throwaway world and it's kind of nice to have something that's actually serviceable that you could keep for a long time. This tent is super lightweight for what it is. There's other tents that I love. Uh, we actually, on one of the guide trucks down in Baja that you can rent, uh, we actually have one of the Alu Cab, Alu Cabins. Those are so nice. They're amazing, but also they are so heavy. They're too heavy for my Tundra and my payload that I have to work with here. But there's places where you have to save weight. So for example, one thing that I was really surprised when I bought this tent is like the rigidness of these doors. I thought like, you know, you'd, you'd they're actually kind of like floppy. Like they are very floppy. Um, they bend a whole lot. They have a lot of give, but like they don't get bent. They don't get misshapen. Um, they're very thin, but that's what makes them very light. Um, so the weird thing is, I, like when I first bought it, I thought, oh God, those seem flappy. I'm probably gonna break that. I've never broken them and I've beat the hell out of this thing. It, it seems like a very worthy and strong design and where they decided to save weight, they managed to do it without sacrificing the quality of the actual build. On the website, you'll notice they talk about it being weatherproof, and I would agree with that statement. They don't claim waterproof, they claim weatherproof. They have everything channeled and made correctly to dispel water even when you're on the freeway and you're going very fast, but like there is the ability for little bits of water to get up and inside of here. Um, I've never really had a huge issue with that. Uh, we have a go fast on one of the other rental trucks down in Baja as well. With that one, there's no holes cut in the bed. So I can definitely tell you, you know, it's not dust proof. Dust gets inside of there. Um, it's also not a hundred percent weatherproof. 
uh, like water, a little bits of water will get in there, but not much, nothing too crazy. It works pretty dang well. So as you can see, the frame itself does go pretty vertical. It doesn't slope in too far. So it kind of does give you a lot of room to work with in the back of your truck. Um, the triangulated supports that they put on the back back here are very small. So they try to give you the maximum amount of space that you can to be able to put things into the back of your truck. Um, these things don't stick out that far. They do give you these little screws, one there, one there, one here, and one here. So only four on that big of a panel um, to actually try to secure things to the side of the frame. As you can see, I actually have some lights um, attached in here and I actually got a little uh, keypad right here for turning on and off my lights. Um, so that helps when I'm camping in here and we've got it all closed up in bad weather and we're playing cards or something in here. It's really nice to just be able to have your actual lights in the back of here and control them. That front also has some of those bolts. There is a company that is not go fast that actually makes a molly panel uh, for the front window here. I definitely want to get one of those and put it on here uh, just to give you additional places to mount things out of the way in the back of the truck. The functionality of these clasps is super basic. Um, so like I said, if you did ever break one, it'd be very easy to replace. Um, and then of course they give you uh, this one in the back that you can actually slide up and down very easily and that enables you to lock the actual door. Their improvement from their V1 to V2 has been incredible. As far as durability and strength, this thing just really doesn't seem to break anymore. If there was any point of weakness that I could point out, they have these little pieces of weather stripping that are in these channels. And they, as you can see with my hand right here, they slide in and out very easy. Um, so about the only thing that I ever have happen is these things will start working their way down and every once in a while I'll have to tap them back up and uh, make sure that I don't actually lose them completely out of the channel. I've never lost one yet. They usually only make it down about an inch or two before I notice and I pop them back up, but definitely something worth keeping an eye on. Do I regret getting this tent? Absolutely not. Do I love how durable it is? Absolutely I do. So it is what it is. You've got to go into this fully knowing what you're getting. You're getting the best, worst, or the best tent with the least amount of features. So I don't know if it's right for you. It was definitely right for me because I'm fighting a battle of trying to get this truck as light as possible, as fast as possible, and have a lot of extra payload available for gear for big, big trips and really long trips. So in my opinion, great tent, but definitely understand what you're buying. 6,218 is the amount of comment questions and DMs I've answered on off-road gear and builds for this channel. Look, we all come to YouTube to get our questions answered, to be entertained, and to find some community. I've done my best so far to answer lots of your questions. I try to be entertaining, but let's face it, uh, my friends tell me that I am dad funny. I think I should be offended. I don't know if you tell me. As far as community though, I love building community. This is why I live on a big farm and I have literally a horde of wildland firefighters that call it home on all of their days off. It's why I now own four whitewater rafts because it's more fun to go on the river when you take people that have never been on the river. It's why I've spent a crazy amount of time and hours answering all your questions. See, that's the thing. I want this channel to bring the community value. See, the thing is, there is power and in information and a safe space to talk about gear and builds with no judgment. The power isn't to build the greatest builds the world has ever seen. The power is to save money and to save time, have the right gear and build for your actual use, and to spend all that money and time that you save doing meaningful and compelling things with the people that you love. I'm pretty sure that's the pinnacle of adventure, is to just do meaningful and compelling things with the people you actually care about. If that sounds interesting to you, then check out our Patreon. We're setting up a Discord. We're building a build portal where we can answer a lot more of your questions in an actual sustainable way. We're building a community meant to be a safe space where dumb questions are encouraged and finding a little bit of adventure is encouraged even more.